Right. Um, go ahead and get started. Or, well, we'll set things up here. We're in a little bit late today, but. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm mostly going to go over the assignment, see if we have questions on that, uh, continue on. Um, I kind of want to talk again about. Um, um, uh, the very last thing, so setting up the um, the output so you can get the system test working um, and uh, you know, running simulations and things. So I had a couple of people asking questions about that the last day or two. Um, so we'll get some examples of that once we get it up here. Should be almost ready. Um, get the environment descriptions too. So, so um, yeah, if you had questions or anything, let me know. So, I mean, last time we kind of covered the, the tasks. Pretty much before the um, the paging system simulator, so doing the do page placement and the use page hits and that kind of stuff. And um, I talked I talked quite a bit then about the clock uh, as well. So kind of the second half of the assignment, getting the, the clock page replacement working. So um, um, I wanted to add some more details on that. So I know I wanted to remind people about running the simulations. You know, so this will be, I think, really helpful in this assignment uh, if people remember um, how to do this. Although, let me see, because um, I don't have everything implemented. So we can try it and see if it's working here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything's compiling. Running, although all my tests won't be passing. Up. Yeah, I got something not compiling here. So, um, Actually, let me um, let me go ahead and um, yeah, so we can do this. Um, and um, a little bit better. Um, okay, so my, I'm waiting for that to compile. Um, one thing I've got to show or talk about again 
is um, remind about these tests here. So, you know, we've got the, um, um, all the files and the SIM files that are used uh, for a lot of testing here. Um, um, and, you know, we've got the dot .sim files or the inputs and the dot .result files or the outputs. Um, there it goes. Wow. Um, So I'm working on some compilation. If you have to go back and look at that, but yeah, I wanted to run, wanted to run the tests, the, the system tests. So um, let's see. Maybe when we get come back to that, we'll be able to bring that back up here. So um, oh, that's that's not right. All right, good. No, I'm good. So let's look at the um, the um, the first simulation because there are there are system tests for uh, that will be testing both the FIFO and the clock once you guys get have it implemented. Okay. So one thing that I was going to talk a little bit about was um, what the output is expected. So. Uh, Basically, uh, if we compare this output for the clock, so this is the expected um, result that we could be, be getting for output for the um, running the clock algorithm for the first simulation. So, um, and we can look, for example, compare that to, let's say, the FIFO output. Um, So really the only difference, so what the output should be doing is at every time step. So, so this was the, um, the current state of the system at time one. Um, so, so the memory size is four, there's 12 page references in the stream for this first simulation. Um, and this is the FIFO over here. Oh, uh, actually this is the clock over here. So there's a mistake on the output there. I should say five, I should say clock, but. Um, anyway, so at system time, there's a page reference to two. Um, and so what you can see is that um, basically after, yeah, so initially memory was all empty. So after we referenced two, that was just the, an initial page placement. So the page two ended up in frame zero. Here, right? So this is the output that we normally get. And yeah, so, so the first few references, so we had a reference to page three, so it gets to the next frame. Um, and then at the next time, we had another reference to two, that was a page hit, right? Um, and then we have a reference to page one, and then finally a reference to page five. So now finally here, the memory is full. The frame pointer should be back to frame zero here, um, or you know, it's set to frame zero for our page replacements for FIFO. Um, so at the next step, we have a reference to two, which is a hit. Uh, but then we have our first page fault. So, you know, since the frame pointer is pointing to frame zero, we replace that one with the page four and continue on here. So um, the only difference that you need to implement um, for the, it's the, the get system state method that you have to implement. Um, so you, probably, you don't have to uh, write that in order to get all the tests to pass, but the, 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 the unit tests, but, um, once you're ready to do the full system test, you will have to get these out there. So basically uh, you need to add in that you output the use bit, right? So the only difference between the, uh, the FIFO and the clock here is that for every frame, we've got the contents of the memory, but we also have an indication of whether the use bit is, is set to one um, or zero, right? So we go back and look through here, you'll see what the use bits are for all the frames. So, um, so that final thing that you need to do for the, the, the clock paging algorithm is um, 
Um, I've got a solution here, so I'm going to be careful. I don't want to show the uh, uh, the solution for the clock stuff, but um, I could bring up FIFO, right? So what I'm talking about is um, the get scheme status, right? So you, you probably have to, you, you do have to implement the other three methods for your clock to get the the test the unit test to work. Uh, but you probably don't have to do this one until you're ready to do the full system test, right? And then what you should do is, I mean, really, it's almost exactly the same. So you can just copy and paste this wholesale. That'll get you 90, 95% of the way there, right? The only thing you need to do is you need to add in. Um, so, so here, when we're doing the loop, this is where we're outputting the um, information about the frame and what page is in the frame here. So, so here, you know, we're, we're outputting the frame number, um, and then um, we pull out the page. And if, if it's empty, we output the empty here. Um, otherwise, we output the page number that's in the frame here. Right? So you can do all the same thing, but you need to just add in something here that also displays the use bit for the frame. So after the page number, um, um, uh, add in a little if a little statement that prints out the use equals, and then you have to find out what your use bit is, one or zero or whatever, and, and help with the use bit there. Um, so it's not a, a big modification for that one. You can, again, for, for all these, like I talked about last time, you can get 90% of the way by using the FIFO uh, and just adding some extra things in there. So we, we talked about what you needed to do to get the make placement decision working for the clock. So you had to in, add in this uh, a search that was based on the use bits. Um, and here, right, so, so you can pretty much use the get scheme status. Um, you just need to add in some extra things where you display the use bit after you display the page number empty um, to get the output there. So. Um, and this will be useful. So, so again, I'll, I'll remind people, I mean, the whole purpose of these simulations is to have a simulation to do some aspect of an operating system. So, um, you know, you can run these by hand. Um, I'll show this again, I've shown this before, but uh, if you open up like a terminal, it should open up in your directory. And these are meant to be run as um, command line um, tools, command line applications here. So, um, for example, you can use the, the dash question mark to, to get help to find out what the, how you invoke the, um, um, the program here, or not test, so um, the, the sim. So. We want to run here. So in this case, um, we need to pass in a scheme, which should be either FIFO or clock, um, which are the only ones that are built in, and then um, the memory size that we want to simulate, and then the page reference. So that that sim input file, right? So um, so you can run a simulation if you've got everything built um, by by invoking the dot slash sim, so you have to put the dot slash in front of it since this directory isn't on our path. Um, and the hook should already be in there to run FIFO or clock if you specify a clock. So, but if we want to run, run FIFO uh, for frame uh, memory um, on um, the page zero one reference dot sim, right? So that should run it on there and you'll get the same output. And that output again is coming from that uh, get uh, system status method inside of the um, um, well, the page replacement scheme that you have. Um, so if you've got your clock running, I uh, can't remember if if um, You have to do anything to the sim or not to add in the clock. I don't think you do. So hopefully that's all there. So, so that means that you know um, um, once you get the um, uh, get system status working, then you can try out running your own clock variation of, for, for page replacement. Right. So, so if you invoke it, um, so again, if I went by too fast, if you invoke it, say I want to use clock instead of FIFO, you can do that. And the other parameters. 
the same. Um, why that's useful is, is, yeah, I mean, if you have a bug on your clock, you can, you can look at it step by step. I mean, you could do this by hand. So, you know, you, you could um, um, take the uh, page reference um, um, stream that we have here. So it's at time, time zero, you know, we have a reference to page two. Um, so if we're doing clock again, I should say clock, this was my clock output, but, but if we're doing clock, um, I mean, for all these, there's gonna be some initial placements before we make a replacement decision. So, so the two gets placed, followed by the three, um, and then the two is a hit here, followed by the one gets um, placed, followed by the five gets placed. And then finally, we've got memory full, um, and, and our next step, um, we have a reference to two, which is a hit, so nothing happens. Um, but then we have a reference to four, so that's our page fault here. So for clock, you know, um, you can look at, we have a reference to four, and this is the current state of memory, this is the frame pointer. So, you know, what happens in this case, since, since it's a fault, since four is not in memory, if you implement your code right, you know, you should end up having to scan all the way through memory, flipping all these bits to zero, and you come back around and just end up replacing frame zero. But, you know, you've, you've got frame one, two, and three's use bit are all zero now. Um, you end up putting page four into frame zero. Um, and when a, a page is initially loaded, its use bit should be one, right? So it should be showing that its use bit is one after you load uh, replace page four here, frame zero. Um, and then finally, you know, you have to make certain that the um, frame pointer is pointing um, to the frame after the one that we just did the replacement for. Right? So these are all common mistakes that I, I see people make when they're doing their clock page replacement. So, you know, they don't quite have the frame pointer, you know, they, they leave the frame pointer pointing to the same frame they just replaced. So that's going to cause problems because you're not going to start scanning from the the correct starting point, which eventually will mean that your state of the system will differ from what the correct state should be. Um, some people don't set the use fit when you bring in the frame correctly, right? So it needs to be set to one. Um, um, when, when you replace a page and bring a page in initially. Um, and um, And then I guess in general, of course, th those are those are simpler errors that, that people make a lot on the um, clock page replacement. Um, um, I mean, uh, more typical to be having some problems with the scanning. Um, so, so not treating this as a circular buffer correctly, um, or you know, right. So, so getting past the the buffer or having some sort of off by one error. So, you know, if I've got four frames in memory, you shouldn't be accessing index greater than three. Um, those kinds of things are you know, all typical of, of issues that people will have trying to implement the um, uh, make replacement decision for the, for the clock. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, looking back at the FIFO, you know, so, so you do have examples of, for example, how to update the frame pointer correctly to get it to wrap around the buffer whenever you increment it. So always checking if you've gone past the end to wrap it back around to zero. Um, and that the, the people I, were, I was talking with, um, uh, the, the two students or the two groups, um, you know, that's kind of what I would suggest, you know, so go back and run yours um, and kind of compare your output to the, uh, the output that's being um, um, specified as, as what should be correct for that particular page stream for the clock. Um, All right, let's see here. Uh, 
Um, so I think that hits us through pretty much really everything here for the past. So yeah, if you get if you get the um, reset scheme and the um, uh, the page hit working correctly. So uh, I'm sure we mentioned that. So clock does have to do something for the page hit. You need to set the use bit to one anytime a page has a hit um, on it. So, um, so again, I don't know if we have a quick example of that, uh, like in the um, um, output for this clock here, but um, uh, yeah, so here we had a hit on page five, for example. So the frame pointer stays at the same place uh, and memory is still the same, just the, the use of it um, for that page five that was referenced got uh, flipped up to a one for a page hit. You know? So that, that has to happen in the page hit um, function um, uh, that you implement for your clock uh, algorithm. Um, Professor, I have uh, an issue with uh, the code, um, the test unit at line 413, and uh, you asked me to do it manually. Is that what you mean by like doing it manually, or uh, just to just run the command and see if the output matches? Yeah, so there's there's a couple of different ways you can do it, but uh, but um, yeah, the best way to kind of debug. I mean, if you got things running and things are crashing stuff, but you're getting the wrong output, yes, yeah, so the best thing is to Kind of go through it um, frame by frame, or, or well, um, time step by time step, um, and, uh, and and compare your output to um, what's expected, and then identify the first place where something um, doesn't look the same, and um, and see if you can figure out from that uh, uh, where it is that that um, um, uh, you know um, uh, you're, you're doing something that's not quite as expected. Um, so yeah, I mean, easy way to do that. I mean, if you can run it and, and you've got your um, system status working correctly so you can see the frames and your use bit for your clock so you, so you can get your output by kind of running it by hand and you could, for example, compare that to you know the, the expected results um, that's in the sim files um, for like any of these page streams. You know? So we've got expected results for the, the the clock for um, three physical memory with three frames or physical memory with four frames um, that you can do for comparison. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I was um, getting at, you know. So if you're at that stage where things are running, but um, at some point your output kind of diverges from the expected, you'll want to go there and, and, and try and figure out you know, what was this? My frame pointer not the right place now after this time step, or did the use bits not get set the way that they look like they should be? That kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Professor, can you uh, explain a bit about the last uh, task, uh, the Getty scheme status? Uh, it, it, uh, the instruction tells us to just copy the implementation from the P4 uh, right. scheme. But um, but we need to add some co codes in too, right? So yeah, so I, was, I, uh, I actually just talked about that, but uh, yeah, I'll talk about it again. So um, so for example, um, let's look at that again. So if we've got the um, if you look at the, the FIFO replacement scheme, um, there's the get scheme status, right? So this is the code that's where the output is coming from for um, you know these results. That you see here. So, so for example, for time zero, you get all this information. Uh, and this information here comes from the the, the uh, page replacement scheme um, code, right? So it prints out the frames and the current page number in each frame here, right? Um, of course, for FIFO, it looks like this. So, so you get the, the the frame number, which page is in the frame, uh, where the frame pointer is pointing to. You know, the page is either the page number or it's identified as empty. So that all comes from this loop here, right? So the loop for each frame outputs the frame number, uh, outputs either empty if that frame is currently empty or the page number that's in the frame, 
um, and then it figures out if this if the frame pointer is currently pointing that frame, it acts on the um, um, uh, the indication where the frame pointer is. So the for for the clock, you can use exactly the same code. The only thing is you need to add in an indication of the use bit. So that just means that if you just copy all this, paste it into your Git scheme status, you're 90% of the way there. It's just that actually before you output the frame pointer, so right here, you have to output uh, use equals zero or use equals one to get what's expected here, you know, use equals one or use equals zero, depending on what your use bit is. All right, but that, yeah, that should go just right here. So that, that'll just be another statement to the output stream uh, where you're accessing your use bit for whichever frame you're currently displaying. So uh, we're uh, outputting a statement after the else statement and uh, everything uh, else stays the same in the code? Yeah, it should, good pretty much. Okay. All right, but that'll, that'll enable you to get yeah, an indication then for the clock of you know not, not only what page is in each frame, but uh, what your use bits are set to. Because yeah, you need that information in order to be, when you're looking through this, to, to check um, um, whether your clock is working correctly or not. So. Professor, what can be uh, the mistake in code if our output does not match uh, with, the, with the expected output? Um, I mean, yeah, there's lots of different sources. So, you know, it depends on what you see, right? So, so the first place that you find uh, um, an issue, you start there, you know, so, so the, the three common things are, you know, the frame pointer didn't end up at the correct place. Uh, use bits weren't set correctly um, after you did a replacement decision, so they didn't get flipped or something like that. Um, um, I mean, there could be more serious problems, but usually that's going to lead to a crash. You know, so if you're if you're not correctly wrapping around and you're going past the end of your um, uh, memory, you know, your 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 array for the memory, you might be accessing stuff, um, and that could just cause incorrect results or that could cause a crash pretty often. So, but, but yeah, you, you, you'd have to specifically kind of try and find the first place where you seem to be diverging and, and, and then you can get more specific about what the issue might be. Um, okay, Professor, I will, I will look into it. Um, so let's see. Uh, um, oh, I did mention that before. I don't know if anybody's kind of seen that. Um, uh, anybody that gets their clock working, you know, um, um, if you're interested in this, you know, try. You can try. Uh, doing like least recently used or optimal. So in this case, this is a simulation. So we actually have the full uh, page reference stream that's going to happen. So you can actually look in the future and, and, and uh, implement optimal. So um, LRU and optimal are different than FIFO. So, but, but they're kind of similar to each other. Um, so in both cases, you either uh, you know, so you can either kind of look back in history to find the least recently used from the current reference that's being made, or you can look forward in the page reference stream. So look forward in, in uh, the references that are coming up to find the one that's gonna be referenced furthest in the future. So. Um, All right, I don't know, did, 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 did anybody have some other questions or things they want to discuss in this? Um, I mean, looking forward, of course, you know, so this is due um, on Friday to so try and get them in by the due date, um, you know, keep sending questions and things. So, um, and and um, yeah, I mean, as usual, then we're gonna have our test over unit four. So, 
next week I'll probably do some review on that as well as maybe kind of go over the uh, example solution for the program assignment. Um, yeah, and we're coming kind of to the end of the, the class here. So we've got one more unit um, after this. So, um, just as a heads up, I might have some extra credit opportunity, other extra credit opportunities for this class as well. I'll post some more information about that, but uh, we've got some experiments running and I'm trying to recruit some subjects for it. So I might um, give an opportunity to make up some stuff on the program assignments by participating in the experiments and things. So um, should have an announcement by that uh, on that by sometime this week here. Um, hopefully we'll have enough time for people to maybe do that um, before the end of the semester here. Um, All right, I'm probably gonna go ahead and stop my, my recording here and I'll post this as usual, although I'll probably leave the, the Zoom up for a bit here, see if um, people have some more questions and things. So uh, let's go ahead and stop the recording for this session here, unless, unless we get some more questions.